Military officials at the Pentagon are under fire for secretly monitoring war correspondents covering the U.S. campaign in Afghanistan. The Defense Department has admitted keeping profiles on all reporters. RT's Dina Gosowski joins us now live from Washington, D.C. Hi there, Dina. So over to you. Well, people in the United States like to say, if you can't trust the U.S. media, who can you trust? After all, the press is supposed to be the watchdog of the federal government. But a new report may put that notion into question. Get this. Apparently, journalists who want to embed with U.S. troops in Afghanistan could be vetted by a controversial firm contracted by the Pentagon. The firm would look into how that journalist in question covered the U.S. military in the past. Now, the Pentagon is quick to say that they are not violating any policies but war correspondents and, of course, viewers all over the world aren't really buying that up so easily. So what gives here? Well, joining me to discuss just that, Kevin Barron. He's the Washington Bureau reporter for Stars and Stripes, the newspaper that actually broke the story in the first place. Thank you so much for being here. So first of all, Stars and Stripes has an interesting connection to the DOD. They're either owned by it or, as you said, subsidized by it. So in reporting this, are you essentially questioning your bosses? That's one way to put it, sure. You know, we take it as a point of pride to, you know, to be an independent newspaper just what like any other. What do they feel about that? I, well, they respect that as well. You know, you know this, it's a long-term relationship we've had with the Pentagon, and, and our editorial independence is guaranteed by law. So how is the Pentagon able to do this? Well, that this is, is the big question right now. The Pentagon um, has been saying for a week that uh, you know they do contract with this private uh, company, and the company provides them with what, what is basically uh, background information on journalists who want to go to Afghanistan. Um, but what we have found uh, just today is that uh, press uh, press officers who were in Afghanistan as recently as last year say they were using these reports to determine whether or not to grant embed requests and or where to steer a reporter for their embed with uh, the military. But should these reporters really be vetted or have they always been profiled and this is really just one of the first times that we're actually hearing about this, that there's concrete evidence that this is happening? Well, according to the Army's own rules for embeds, no. The rules say in them that, you know, this embed system of journalists that was set up before the wars in, in Iraq and Afghanistan was designed specifically to, you know, facilitate journalist requests and specifically not to uh, prevent any embarrassing news coming out uh, about the military. Uh, so the, 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 the idea that... But wouldn't these... that kind of put into question freedom of the press if you're, if you're saying, well, this can't come? There can't be anything embarrassing. There can't be anything gory. There can't be anything bad. So, so what are people seeing? Are they really getting the full story? Well, exactly. The, the point, the suggestion in these uh, profiles, as they're written, is that based on a journalist's past, past work, uh, if it's positive, negative, or neutral in tone, um, some of them have said, you know, that this, that if you steer this journalist towards certain events, it could possibly or probably result in. Uh, more positive coverage for the military, or it would negate any negative uh, coverage of the so military. So they kind of say, oh, go get this story in the back of their minds. They already know what the story is going to look like when it comes out as a two-minute package, I guess. But here's something else that's interesting. This PR firm that's supposedly handing, handling these profiles gets a contract, $1.5 million, the Rendon Group, the same group that actually m helped George W. Bush to make the case for the Iraq War, was talking about the weapons of mass destruction. Of course, we all realize that that was false. Could then, when we think about Afghanistan, this firm help to distort some of the facts coming out of that war as far as the coverage goes? Well, that, that's the concern. I mean, obviously, there's, there's a history. This is not, uh, you know, this, this company, like I said, has, has this history. Uh, and this contract is not new. Uh, the current one is a one-year contract from January. And, and the more we've investigated, the more we've found out that, you know, Rendon itself said they've been doing this work since 2005. Other press officers have said that they've heard the same kind of thing as has been going on since the very beginning of the war. And other journalists have told me the same thing, that not just specifically these uh, Rendon contracts, but that wherever they've gone, and some older journalists have said, you know, well, back into the 90s when they show up to uh, some sort of assignment with the military, the press officer has a folder, has a packet, has some background information. The big problem or the question that we're trying to get to is what they do with this information. And a year ago, the, the press officers themselves have said they use this information to determine what to do with embed requests and where to point them. Today, the Pentagon is saying, you know, the current uh, forces who are in charge of the contract have said they're not doing that anymore, um, but, the, but they are still producing these uh, reports for the military. So how are the journalists going to react to this? I mean, are we going to see a rebellion within the U.S. press uh, anytime soon? 
Uh, well, I don't know, but I know that in the last couple of days, I've uh, received plenty of emails and phone uh, calls from my own colleagues uh, asking, you know, how do I get my report? What's my rating? What does this mean? And where do I go for it? And a lot of people started calling um, Afghanistan, calling the press offices down there, saying, can I see my report? And the press offices has pushed but back. But isn't that interesting that they're questioning, can I see the report, and not saying, why is there even a report in the first place? Well, plenty are, are making that, as, okay. that assertion as well, and so are we. And the idea being, you know, why are, why is, this, is a company receiving a million and a half dollar contract to do what basically seems like is a bunch of Googling? Uh, right. To find out, you know, what your what your, your pre previous reporting is, and even the Pentagon itself. This week, uh, you know, Brian Whitman, the spokesman, said, you know, we don't do this kind of thing here, uh, and I and he said, I see no value in this. Uh, and when we asked him, you know, he said, you know, with, without uh, equivocation, that they don't have any contracts and they've been offered by outsiders and they reject it. And, he, and we said, well, then who does this kind of work? And he said, we do. We do it ourselves. Well, it's an interesting story. I want to thank you for being here for your.